everyone and welcome back to Apollo's Odyssey. Tonight I have a very special guest with us, uh, James Gilliland, who is the founder of East Study Ranch. And uh, I'm about to bring him on in a second here. But before we get started, um, I have some items up on my store right now. And the spears, Shaman spears, are almost sold out. I have two items left. Uh, one is my USA Patriot spear. And if you don't know what shaman spears are, they are uh, basically all channeled myself. They are kind of a mix between spears and scepters, and they are all filled with copper coils, crystals, magnets, and sand. I collect from sacred places around the world. Uh, right now, I only have the Patriot spear and one other spear. Oh, but besides that, I've been working on these amazing organite creations. So if you want to donate to my show and help me out with getting me in my new studio feel free to check out my art i have these amazing organite necklaces which i created myself uh these oh, where's that one go initiation key necklaces which are actually filled with moldavite and crushed fluorite and i also made these myself and organite pyramids and organite brass knuckles in case you really need to align someone's chakras <laughs> So I'm um, really excited to bring James on. The last time I saw him was at Camp Disclosure. I had a really incredible time. Uh, so let's get him on here. James, how are you? Long time no see. Yeah, you too. I hope this works out okay. I'm trying to get this set up to where it's, because I'm on my phone now, because It didn't like your other, your system, <laughs> but- uh, Oh no. <laughs> so here we go, I mean, this'll work. Well, a second ago when I was talking to you, you're walking around the ranch and it looks so gorgeous up there right now. Oh, it is. It's beautiful. The um, uh, the weather here is just phenomenal. It's like t-shirt weather and uh, uh, everything's nice and green. You know, it's uh, we got the pond stock. We got a ton of fish in the pond now. And, and so it's, uh, you know, everybody's happy. Now, I haven't made it up to East Study yet, which I, I would love to this year, but um, hanging out with you at Camp Disclosure was really fun, and I really enjoyed doing the sky watch with you, and we were kind of discussing the lion beings, and I oh, definitely yeah. had a really incredible experience with the sort of uh, contact <laughs> that you did. What, what was the contact technique you used for that? Oh, the, are you talking about the transpersonal release sessions? or? Yeah, yeah, that's what it yeah. was called. Yeah, you move the patterns, move the blocks and patterns out of the way. And then, you know, people don't realize that th it's a very spiritual thing to have contact with the higher dimensional beings. It's not just a ship flying around or nuts and bolts or things like that. And and that's why disclosure is so backwards right now. I mean, we're for 70 years, we're still trying to, to <laughs> prove that UFOs are real and Uh, all of the above is going on. So I, I tell people, you know, the government has its secret space program. They've been back engineering ships since the 60s. And uh, the Germans have been doing it even before that. And and uh, and then we have the the other beings that have been coming here for probably about six, six million years that we know of and colonizing the earth, you know, over and over again. So and they have time travel too. So all the above is going on and everybody wants to put it in one box, but it's a real controlled narrative at, right now. And it, when you step outside of that box, they really come down on you. 
Yeah, you know, so many people have been coming out in our community and bringing forward, you know, their own stories, their own experiences. And that's what I like to do on my show is kind of bring everyone to the table and let them talk about, you know, their side of their understanding of what's going on in regards to disclosure that's happening right now. And a lot of my audience, uh, people are asking me who you are. So maybe uh, if you don't mind giving a quick bio on and what, what all you do. Yeah, that's my least favorite thing to do. But, uh, um, you know, I've been doing this for a very, very long time. I've had contact ever since I was a child. And, uh, you know, I've written three best-selling books. And have their own sightings, you know, have their own experience. And, and really, that's what it's all about. Um, it's not about somebody telling you what's going on. It's about you having your own experience and making your own contact and getting your own information from within. That's the most important thing. Definitely. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about how this, uh, your contact uh, experience works? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I forget what you said. It was called again, transpersonal contact. Oh, yeah. Was well, there's different ways. Uh, like here at the ranch, it's just always here. You know, you walk outside. Um, the, I think it was last night we went out and we had three or four power ups. They came home just totally powered up and put on quite a show. But uh, that's always happening. Now, if you want to go to the next level, you want to know who's on the ships. And and then so when you understand that and do your research, you, you start realizing who's on the ships. And then later on, as you expand in awareness, you realize that, you know, you're you're actually experiencing your family, your, you know, your star nation family and things like that. So, you know, there's many contact and, you know, it's we need to just break out of the. Are you still there, James? Um, it's frozen here on my end, so I don't know if that's just me. Okay, are we good? Yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry, good. you froze for a second there. <laughs> I wasn't sure where we were, but... Uh, uh... I think we we're talking about just the ships and things, but but basically, <laughs> yeah, it's it's all about people having their own experience and getting their own information, having their own contact. It's it's all about empowering the individual and rising to the occasion to hook with the spiritually and technologically advanced beings. So I heard from many individuals that there's a lot of Bigfoot sightings at your ranch. Uh, so I actually kind of had a little fun with the uh, poster for tonight's show. I okay. hope you liked it. I put some little, uh, is it is a plural for Bigfoot, Big Feet? I wasn't sure. Um, but I, I put no some uh, Big Feet in the, in the picture know. of they... tonight's show. I was having some fun with it. <laughs> Looks like we're bouncing. Yeah. Okay, I got you back. All right. Yeah, um, yeah, there's... Looks like we're glitching out here again. Sorry about that, you guys. Um, trying to bring these questions up on here. Oh, are we good now? Yeah, yeah. Cool. That's interesting. You used to have a really good signal here. I don't know what's going on. They don't want. Yeah, to you know. So yeah, someone just said. Let me see here. They're they're blocking him. They don't want us to know. <laughs> yeah, they do that. You wouldn't believe the interference we get. It's it's insane. It's like I'm. Like I'm in Facebook jail and they gave me another 30 days and I didn't even post anything. You know, what? stuff like that. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah I was already in That's jail crazy. for 30 days and they gave me another 30, but 
it's it's crazy and our youtube channel they keep taking down our shows and and uh it's it's getting ridiculous so we're out on on a lot of other channels plus we have bbs which is the monster and it, it goes out to it's in probably 80 or 90 countries so they can't stop it you know the information is getting out anyway and it's like a multi-dimensional portal where you're at right yeah, everything's going on here. I mean, the other night, this sounds off the wall, but I had connection with these two. They're, they're beings, they're elven, elven beings, two females. And what? So oh my crazy. God, I've been reading a book about elves lately. Or it's like this like world, it's kind of like a fantasy world, but there's like elves and gnomes. It's kind of like a Lord of the Rings type yeah. uh, series, but like, actually, I don't, not better, but it's its own thing. And the elf creatures in it are my favorite. Yeah, I love them. They're beautiful beings and they come around. There's a door on the mountain that opens up to the inner earth and the elven beings actually control the door. They're the ones that no control way. who comes in and who comes out. And uh, it's, it's quite interesting because there's not just one thing happening here. We have the ships coming in every size, shape, color you can imagine. And then we have the, the other dimensions, you know, the inner earth beings are, are making contact here. We have Bigfoot cruising through. Uh, we put apples out and we put peanut butter. And what's funny is if you don't give them organic, they won't touch it. It has to be organic. Apples too. If you no put, five, put five apples out, three are organic, two aren't, the two will be left. Wow, that's really interesting. Someone here, Jeanette Morrison here is asking, what's ESETI? Oh, ESETI stands for Enlightened Contact with Extraterrestrial Intelligence. I just, I love the symbol with the lion that you have for it. Um, can you tell everyone here a little bit about the lion beings? Because I was like really fascinated by that in our uh, sky watch at camp disclosure last year and yeah. i definitely felt i connected with them during our experience yeah i think you have a yeah i think you have a star star nation connection you have a past life with the syrians i believe but uh the uh they're very there's three levels to them there's the humanoid cat-like beings that are from sirius and uh they're also from lyra as well they they're explorers they go all throughout the galaxy basically and then you have a panther type being that's six dimensional. And then the seventh dimensional one are the lion beings. And they're about 17 feet tall. They're, they're huge, you know, and it's very, very powerful, very hot energy when they come in. And when you need backup or you need clearing for any of the negative ETs, they're great. When they pop in, they, they, they're down to business. But they're very funny and they like to joke around a lot because they're very intimidating. It's like we're getting some interference again. Uh, yeah. I wanted to say, uh, I, I, I want to know about the black, the panther one. Is it a black panther? Because I actually had a really intense vision with a black panther one time, and I've been like really hmm. obsessed with them ever since. It was actually in Machu Picchu. Like one, like kind of came to me. I had a really incredible experience with it. Yeah, yeah. It's probably a spirit being, most likely, but. They, uh, um, the, the most of Panthers that I've seen, the ones that have appeared here are kind of a pinkish color. The frequency of the realm they come in is kind of like a pinkish orange, I think, more pink of a frequency when they show up. We have actually have photographs of them. Um, I haven't seen the black ones, but I'm sure they're out there. I've heard about them. Wow. Yeah, my experience was actually in Machu Picchu. I It was like probably one of the most intense experiences I've ever had. It was kind of paranormal. And um, I was actually having really bad altitude sickness. I don't know if it was altitude sickness. It might have been something else, but I think it was altitude sickness. And yeah. um, I'm, I was at the village at the bottom of Machu Picchu. And this, uh, this I, I, I was like really having this sickness like so bad that I couldn't even like walk. So... I just decided to sit down and meditate and just heal myself. And, you know, I, I figured maybe if I connected somehow some things within myself, I could like work through it. So I, I'm meditating. And as soon as I like kind of drop in, I felt like my soul left my body and went out into the jungle. 
and I saw this like Black Panther was walking in the jungle and I just kind of fell into his body and I was walking with it. <laughs> and I walked into a cave and it was like this like cold like cave. And then I, I after a while I came back and I opened my eyes and I co felt completely better. I went from literally being so sick I could barely walk to like climbing the stairway of death of yeah. watching people the next day. So it was a really interesting experience. And I've always, I found out later, I started researching them because I'm like, what does this mean? And they were saying that Black Panthers are the keepers of the time continuum. Huh. And I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, we've had, we have those. I've seen Black Panthers here, you know, walking across the field. And that's kind of normal. That comes with paranormal places. But, you know, wow. we're, we're on where two ley lines intersect and we're on what they call a Michael line or a dragon line. And and then we have the mountain and even the government knows they they call this the purple zone because it's this zone where all those magnetic anomalies are happening. You know, it's on their map and they they know about it. So, uh, you know, crazy stuff goes on here on a regular basis. And it you, you got to get into that multidimensional mind to really understand what's going on, because, you know, this meets it we have and the, bo the body, the personality and the mind are so limited and your soul is so vast. Your emotional body is much bigger than the intellect. And, and then your your soul is, is so vast and you have all the memories of your past lives and everything else. So when you merge with your soul, these things open up for you and, and uh, you take that multidimensional ride throughout. You know, and eventually at the end, you find out it's all you. So it doesn't matter. You know? Wow. So can you tell us about any kind of experiences? I, I know you, you probably have tons of experiences on the ranch yeah. there. Um, oh, and also, can you kind of explain the ranch to maybe people that haven't heard of it? And maybe talk about some experiences people have had there, you have had there. Yeah, we do a lot of different things here. We have some of the top scientists and healers and, and elders from every nation come here and do workshops and lectures. And, uh, you know, we do, we have yoga here. We do Qigong, a very ancient form of Qigong. Uh, a lot of things like that are, are ongoing here. And we have, uh, one of the nice things is being on the vortex, the veils between worlds are very thin. So you can It's like we're dropping out again. Uh, oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So anyway, the awakening healing process here is amplified and accelerated. So people have amazing experiences when they come here. But there's kind of a warning here because it's a double edged sword. So people will come here and they go, I love this place. This is, I'm home. You know, I feel the star nations and everything well that same energy is going to bring your stuff up so your wounds and traumas and wrong conclusions from past experiences could start coming up to be healed and it's a golden opportunity to heal them or you can project and blame and and run away and and most people own it you know most people come here and they end up owning it and healing and, and moving on but there are those that project and blame and run away you know and that's okay too they'll figure it out later so some people just have like kind of a weird reaction, just leave after they well, it's, it? Yeah, the energy, what happens here is, is it's everything is amplified and accelerated here. And so become a mirror, you know, you mirror back to people, their stuff. And I, I have a t-shirt that says, I'm not your father. I'm not your mother. I'm not your ex-lover. <laughs> I'm just sitting here, you know? And uh, and people will project, you know, their their whatever they didn't get as a child will come up, and they'll they'll have an opportunity to heal it or whatever they didn't get, you know. So it's it's a place when you really want to evolve and go to the next level. This is a place to go if you want to remain in your in your present understanding. It's it's not it's not for you, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you know, I, I feel um, definitely with myself, I, I, I kind of feel like my energy tends to reflect things back to people. So <laughs> when you yeah. say that, what you had on your shirt, I definitely feel that with myself. I think like, I think I may be a Hayoka empath. I'm not really sure, but it, it really seems yeah. like it fits for me. That's That sounds exactly like me. I, I, uh, I use humor, you know, to trigger people sometimes to get them to look at their buttons and when i see that big red button i can't help but push it you know it's just like <laughs> and uh and, but you have to, yeah you really have to practice that loving detachment and not and when you do that because you know they'll, it'll come at you you know they'll come at you and project and blame and and uh everything but i i love this saying this one kid told this master he goes i really want to become the christ i really want to become the Christ. And he goes, you do. And he goes, yeah. And he goes, they'll hate you. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And he, he goes, what do you mean they'll hate me? You know? And he said, because you're going to mirror back to them everything they love and don't love about themselves. And it's going to be amplified. So you sure you want to do this, you know? And, and that's what happens. The, the more enlightened you become, the more of a mirror you become and an amplifier. And, and so yeah, lately I'm really having a hard time just being around people in general. I, I'm spending a lot of time in nature and the gardens and building and being creative, you know, I'm really enjoying that. But there, there's right now the Schumann resonance is off the scale. We're getting bombarded by chronal mass ejections. That's that's creating intense changes in our bioelectric fields around our bodies, severe weather, increase in earthquake and volcanic activity. But we're going through intense change and, and chaos right now. And it's birthing pains. It's a good thing because it's part of the healing, but um, sometimes it gets old, you know, just dealing with all the chaos. It's, it doesn't have to go that direction. Yeah, definitely for myself, I found working on my art is my way of kind of working through these things. And um, yeah. I, I wish I had a, you know, more of a yard I could be in out here in LA, but I got my own little yard up here in the hills, but it's pretty small. <laughs> so for yeah. me, it's like working through my art. Uh, that's definitely my way of working through these things. I've definitely been spending a lot of time on my own as well. I know the last time I talked with you, uh, right after camp disclosure, you were saying you had some baby goats or you had some goats that were about to have babies. Yeah. Whatever yeah. With that. Well, we have, we had goats. We actually um, uh, sold the goats and we have just sheep here right now. And, uh, and the sheep are like a big fluff ball, you know, they come and hit you and nothing happens. But <laughs> the, the goats, you know, they, we had a ram here and he kept kind of hitting people and, and they eat everything. They eat all your trees and everything. So we, we went back to the sheep and we used to have yaks here for a while. And the same thing, everybody but thought they, they were- They had the curly horn things, yeah, right? Yeah, huge horns, yeah. So everybody wanted to be a yak whisperer here, you know, and they go, oh, I can't, because I'd, I'd go out there and I'd pet the bull and things like that, but there was an, an energy, we knew each other, you know, it was, it was, uh, and other people would try to do, I go, don't go in there, we can put signs on there, don't go into the pen. And boy, you know, somebody would go in there, you know, invariably going, you know, I'm just love. It's all about love. And I said, well, <laughs> the yak has a different opinion, you know, so, and they're, they're kind of terrible. And uh, now we just have sheep, you know, and, and they're easy. You just kind of grab like a big pillow and toss them around. <laughs> so is it, is your place kind of like, do you do like a kind of self-sustaining thing at your place? Like, do you yeah. actually like, like, so sheep are like the only animals you have there right now, or do you have uh, other kinds of animals as well? Okay, we're back again. <laughs> yeah, we have about, I think we have about at least 40, 30 or 40 chicken. Today. Oh, wow. I know Laura Eisenhower just got some chickens and she's been, uh, raising them a bunch of little baby chickens. Uh, she actually showed them on my show the other day. Oh, here I am. I'm back. <laughs> You're back. Yeah. 
Yeah, we have uh, uh, yeah massive gardens. We have chickens. We have sheep. We have uh, uh, just a whole ponds full of trout here. And then I have another place. Um, I my mother's house. Um, I just acquired that. In, it's in the family. It's on a river, so you know you could just walk out and catch fish there too. It's 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 not. Uh, we're glitching out again. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There's a little feedback here. Um, oh, looks like he's coming back. Yeah, yeah. We have we have about four different internets here. We have about four different lines. And unfortunately, the line I was going to do on the studio, it wouldn't support, you know, your live stream system because they say they said you had to go on Google Chrome. And that to me, I hate that system. So I don't want to <laughs> put any money. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't I don't like using Google Chrome either. But yeah, StreamYard only seems to really work with that. So yeah, yeah, I wanted to make a comment about about the fish so there's there's good fishing up there I, I if i go up there i would love to go fishing because i miss that a lot yeah um, i actually went fishing up in half moon bay a while back and i caught 12 lean caught in two hours i grew up in illinois and yeah. the illinois river like i would go fishing there all the time and i would never catch anything except for like little tiny things and then i went fishing for 12 or two hours up in Half Moon Bay and caught 12 lean cod like this big. And man, like cooking your own, like catching your own food and eating it really makes you feel like a hunter. And it's really interesting to have that energy. I feel like people these days are so disconnected with, um, you know, like the food that they're eating. It's like, you know, most people, they just go to the store and buy their food and then they never go through this sort of ritual of actually gathering the food themselves and eating it and i think that's really important <laughs> yeah yeah definitely um you know people don't realize what it's like you can go down to the river and you know pull out a big fat trout and uh, dig up a potato and pick a salad you know and uh and even there's all kinds of like miners lettuce all this other stuff here too you can grab you know and it's nothing like what you get in the store and it, it's just it's an amazing dinner when you eat it you're just you can feel it you're charged you know so uh yeah definitely I, I think i love being close to nature and being out in nature and there's some beautiful lakes up here there's they have one area they call it the land of the thousand lakes but it's it's uh uh you know it's we're right next to the wilderness and and so you go up into the wilderness and there's so much stuff going on up there there's uh, if you talk to the Native Americans, they're fun because they've had so many things happen up there. There's an area we go to where the door opens, they call it the fairy lights, and they go, we don't go. Right? They don't go in that area. They stay away from it. But Why is that? What stories do they have about that area? Well, the thing about it is those areas is that you have to be extremely respectful and conscious and and ask you know permission and on an inner level and things like that and you, there's no problems but if you don't you can have problems but uh i think out of respect they just leave that those areas alone they don't you know that's their area and they they leave it alone it's like like bigfoot i know exactly where bigfoot is i could take you right there and have an experience but they don't want us there and so I trespassed into their place a couple times accidentally. And I brought an offering afterwards and gave them some apples and bananas and meditated and apologized. Yeah, so it's all good. But I mean, I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to take you it. You just personally back. handed it to them? No, no. You said it. Uh. <laughs> You'll set it. You do a meditation. They're extremely sensitive, very telepathic. And you tell them, you know, I'm sorry. I, I'm going to leave this on this rock here. And, and you'll see it just disappear. It's just gone. And then I was kind of messing with him because I put it in the water on a rock in the water. And I go, he's going to splash, you know, he's going to make a splash, you know, to get this. I'll be able to see him this time and nothing, you know, the fruit just disappeared. Never saw him. No way. That's crazy. Uh, 
it looks like we're glitching out again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back. But there's a lot of people have seen these. Multiple people see them at the same time. There's there's a very young one named Delaki, and he kind of breaks the rules and he engages a lot and and kind of mess shows himself to people. And then there's a, a family, a whole family comes through here, and there's a little female, a really small female that comes through with her mom now and then. But uh, it's it's kind of you never know when it's going to happen, but. You know, when we put the peanut butter out for them, the jar will be empty and, and the lid bat is back on the jar and it's back up where we put it, you know, up high. So I, I always tell people. No tell other animals that. would have like posable thumbs to be able to do that. So. Yeah. You know, a raccoon could probably get the lid off, but it would never put the lid back on and put it back yeah. where it was. So so that just doesn't happen. You What's know? the uh, lifespan of big feet? And, like, you said there's a younger one. Do they have like the same kind of like age range as humans? Or like you know, I, I really don't know. I, I've seen some there's one we just call him Elder and he's he's gray, his very gray hair, very, very wise. And then he has a couple apprentices that he's teaching. Wow. I have no idea how old he is, but I, I think I think they live a lot longer than we do. I'm pretty sure. And they're they're interdimensional. <laughs> yeah, they can phase out. Um, I I saw one. I saw a female uh, 50 feet away, and I was staring at her, and she was moaning and making this sound, like she was really hurt or something. I couldn't figure out what was going on. And uh, uh, so I started walking towards her and I put my hands out so so she could see I didn't have a weapon or anything. And uh, I got within 50 feet of her and finally she stood up. She was sitting on a log with some bushes in front of her. And she stood up and she looked at me and nodded her head, you know, like, thanks, but no thanks. And I was trying to send her a message. Are you OK? Can I help? You know, what's going on? And. And then I had a, a friend of mine, Tom Dongo, who was a really good remote viewer at the time, and he remote viewed it. And I didn't even tell him. And, and it was a female, and she lost her daughter. She got separated. And so she was so emotionally distraught. That's why I got so close to her. But uh, uh, And so I had a remote view again. I said, well, what's going on with the daughter? Is she OK? And he says, yeah, she's with the others. And so there's a whole tribe of them there. You know, there's a whole group there. and. Uh, uh, again, I'm not going to say where that is because I know <laughs> everyone's going to want to run there and try to find them. I know. Uh, I, I talked to, uh, I love talking to Jermaine. Uh, he, he was at your ranch last year and at uh, Camp Disclosure. And he was telling me that he was going through the field chasing these little orb beings and he heard like a little children big. Bigfoot's running around. <laughs> yeah, I love hearing his stories. About yeah, that. there's a lot going. People from everywhere come here and have experiences, and and uh, you know all walks of life. We we have uh, triple PhD Boeing engineers and Lockheed Skunk Works people, and even NASA's come out here, and they've no all way. said, yeah, they go the ships are real. But now that now the triple PhD Boeing engineers and the Skunk Works people actually testified on coast to coast when Art Bell was on there, but the NASA guy, I, I can't even say his name because he'll lose his job, you know, but he was, uh, I, I'm not going to say anymore because I don't want to get him in trouble, but he he's one of five people that they send whenever there's a lot of UFO activity, they, they have five people that have their bags packed, ready to go, they're investigators and they send them, uh, they just get a phone call, say, go here, the ticket's waiting for you and they, they uh, investigate and when they say there's no investigation going on that's are you there yeah we're here yeah so i mean we have black helicopters buzzing us on a regular basis yesterday we had um four uh look like f-18s tree you know coming over really fast treetop level and circled the whole area and then went back and and i have all that on film and you know treetop level helicopters filming us with the door uh, with gear um so 
and they're trying to leg day. Um, so, so do you think that those helicopters are after something? Are they flying? I know you're frozen right now. I don't know if you can hear me while you're frozen, but I guess I, I'm just wondering if the the uh, helicopters. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> they're probably the ones cutting our feed right now. You know, they're very good at doing that. They can do it with a satellite or a helicopter. They'll just cut your feed. Yeah. So, so do you think they're like after something? I mean, are they looking for activities that like our government trying to find some activity that they've seen go over the area or are they just kind of monitoring the area? What, what do you think about that? Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. I are heard you. you. Yeah. They are definitely, uh, trying you know that i talked to a base commander that called me up and he said he said you need to stop lying about the ufo stuff and everything else and and uh and i go who is this you know and he says i'm something commander whatever colonel and uh i went i went i go so you're a colonel and and uh you don't know about this stuff that you're out of the loop and he got really quiet you know, and, and he goes, well, he goes, we just want to catch one of them. And I said, I said, well, you know, in the interest of national security, these people are light years ahead. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, so I said, wouldn't it be in the interest of national security to make friends with them? Oh, you're frozen again. Yeah, I think, I think they have the finger on the button, you know, they, oh, he's, he's, we don't want him saying this, you know, but, you know, you know, Nick, if we do another interview, we should go through the producer. He has all the bells and whistles, and then I'll go through his, and he, he's got an amazing setup, so all the bandwidth you can imagine, so we'll, we'll set it up a little different next time. Okay, cool. That yeah. sounds good. Oh, uh, yeah, it seems like every time you try to get into something important, they're like, nope. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we're going we're going through a huge shift and on every level. And what's happening is people's true motives, true intentions are all coming up. The masks are coming down, not just the other masks, but uh, and people are being seen for who they are. And what I'm seeing right now, there's a big war between the posers and the authentic. And definitely. Um, yeah, you know, I, I'm definitely feeling that on every level, especially, I mean, the politically it's shown this, uh, sort of shift or this, the split between these types of people, but, um, you know, it, it's definitely unfortunate. <laughs> um, Sorry, guys, you know, it's just to be expected when you're doing a show from the middle of an interdimensional portal. Um, does anyone have any questions? Feel free to throw them in the chat. Yeah, definitely need a part two. <laughs> wow, that was a long one. Yeah. 
Oh no, are you frozen again? Mystic Q says, mass meditation for the internet connection to stabilize. Let's do it, guys. Everyone in the chat right now, I want you all to do a mass meditation to stabilize James' yeah. internet. <laughs> yeah, I did a clearing before the show because I had a feeling this was going to happen, you know, but uh, uh, they're, they're, yeah, definitely need to stabilize the line. But I know you said something about politically. Maybe I shouldn't say that word. That, that's the cut word maybe oh uh, yeah yeah you were talking about these the split happening between these two types of people i don't yeah. want to discuss that because i i have noticed that myself and do you mean just kind of in the political aspect of it or just in general in general every level um you know you have kind of like the the white hats and the patriots and the, and you have just your everyday people that realize, you know, they, they're not happy with being lied to and cheated, you know, no matter who, who you, you want in office, um, you know, there is extreme fraud. We know that. But, uh, you know, the, the masses, the majority of the people are saw what, what went down and aren't happy with it. And, uh, and, and then you've got even the religions are, are really having, you know, a lot of it's being exposed on the highest levels of the religions they've gone astray you know the business institutions of course they've they've gone walkers you know they're they're out of control they're dropping Okay, it looks like we're frozen again. Yeah, Brittany Marie, definitely a part two. We got to do that. Massive sun ejections hitting the earth today. Yeah, definitely feeling it. You know, yeah. I definitely feel off when, when I feel these spikes uh, in the Shimon resonance. I definitely can feel them pretty intensely being a sensitive Virgo. Yeah. I just sent a text out to, to a friend of mine. I said, hey, what's this human resonance doing? I go, I know we're having a coronal mass ejection. So uh, <laughs> I, I was feeling it all day today. I was just going, you know, the energy was like intense. Yeah, and, I've been uh, feeling it all day as well. Yeah, and I just put it to use. You know, I just get really proactive on projects here and things like that. Do a lot of physical work, you know, when that happens. And sometimes you just need to lay down and assimilate the energy. I had to do that today, actually. It was like just so intense. I, I just kind of had to lay there and meditate all day. I'm like, I feel so lazy, but like, <laughs> I feel like this is necessary right now. Normally yeah. I'm just working on my spears all the time. I've been kind of like the past week just in like my art session. You don't know about my spears, do you, James? Oh, we're frozen again. Yeah. You know, I love throwing spears and axes and archery, all that stuff. I'm very, you know. I well, my, mine are kind of like wands, actually. Yeah, nice. Yeah. I put uh, copper coils, crystals, and magnets all down the inside because the bamboo is hollow. Yeah. And, um, yeah. You know, it's interesting. Actually, last year, I think a little after I met you earlier in the year, uh, or back in September, or no, it was August. I actually had a weird dream about you that involved the spears. Would you yeah. like to hear it? So um, at the time, I was actually working for an artist, like on the side, uh, sanding these like big, like wooden pieces for these temples he was building. And so I was just like kind of sanding with this like power sander all day, every day. And I, I guess it was really in my mind. And I think it was because I just got back from, you know, Camp Disclosure and um for some reason in this dream i so i i always go hiking with my spears that's kind of my thing like every time yeah. i'm hiking I'm holding one and in my dream i'm walking through the woods i was hiking with one and then you came up to me and you were talking to me i don't remember what you're saying but i i looked down and my spear had like all this like like chunky sand stuff like it needed to be like you know how something looks when it needs to be sanded like there's like all this like kind of stuff coming out and I was looking at my spear. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to sand this. And 
I don't know. It was so weird. That's all I remember. I woke up and it was just really random. I don't know why I dreamed that. But um, that's my cool story for today. Yeah. I tell you what's <laughs> funny. I do pop into people's heads a lot. I mean, a lot of people have dreams and visions and, and I'll say a quick sentence to them, you know, like a, and that, that happens on a regular basis. But it's really funny is like I have I have an archery thing set up and an axe throwing thing too and and I'm pretty good with double axes like throwing both at the same time, but uh, I was it's funny that the past two or three days I've been going I need to make a spear I need to make some spears, and then oh, then no I way. see your spear I see your spears up there and I'm going okay okay that's what that's about. That's what that's about, you know. I have a huge new collection I'm working on right now. They're they're really powerful. I actually charge them all onto a collective. So um, through the idea of like quantum entanglement, I, I, I do quantum touch energy healing modality. So um, every spear I make, I charge onto this collective and I have like this big spear that the, the point of it was carved out of the Valley of the Kings in Egypt. That's where I got it from. Mm, and wow. I charge them all onto the collective. So it's like every person that has a spear, they make the whole collective stronger. Any healer that uses their spear and like channels energy into it charges the whole collective. And I've probably made like hundreds at this point, and a lot of interesting people have them, so it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I've been wanting to do uh, win. Is it wind chew? I can't remember what you have the staffs and the things, and I've been really wanting oh, like to like a staff spinning thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can Jermaine do, I can does do. that. Huh? <laughs> Jermaine does that really oh, well. Yeah. yeah, I want it. I mean, I can do it, but I'd really like to learn to do it right you know one day i but, uh, i, I want to do it too i actually like when i first started making my spirits i was spinning them around all the time and uh that was just kind of like my thing with them but i never really learned like the exact like art of how to do that yeah. but i kept breaking the ends of them so i kind of had to stop doing that because i sell them <laughs> more now so yeah well just get a get a practice one you know like get like if you're gonna play with swords get wooden ones first you know and then yeah, you I actually yourself. collect all the bamboo for my spears myself in Topanga Canyon, which is like kind of between LA and um, or Hollywood and Malibu. And it was actually a very interesting like kind of energy vortex there. So I always just pick all my bamboo there myself and use them for the spears. That's what it's funny. Just the past couple of days, I was asking people, you know, where I can get bamboo, you know, where I can get a, a thicker bamboo, you know, for uh, and they're great. You know, they you can, you know, smack a bear in the nose if you have to. You know, yeah, <laughs> they're behind, really behind great it. material and they grow so fast. Yeah, and yeah. I heard they're actually um, some of the strongest building material. I think it's in it Japan is. they build with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of the island countries build with it, and we have a pet bear. I have a bear that cruises through my house and my neighborhood in the backyard all the time. And, not here at the ranch, but at the other house, and and uh, and so I'm I'm trying to be friends with him. <laughs> so, so so far we're on. He hasn't eaten me yet, so we're on good terms. But uh, uh, is it anyway. a brown bear or a black bear? The black bear, a black bear, and they're usually really timid. They're they're really not a problem. But uh, you know, it's like I'm just. I mean, I put some apples out for him and think fruit out for him now and then. You know, just to. So, yeah, it's okay to cruise through here. Just don't eat anybody. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you should leave out a big jar of honey like Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, do, yeah. Do bears even like that? I don't know. I just thought Yeah, they do. That. Oh, yeah, they love. Sorry, guys. Looks like it's frozen again. Someone here said there's entire bridges in Japan made of bamboo. That's interesting. You know, I really love working with bamboo. It's uh, definitely a great material to work with. like we're getting some interference again here i hope everyone's enjoying this conversation i know i am wish there wasn't this interference but i guess it's to be expected 
<laughs> Jeanette says, I have my 22 inch alien shaman spear and it's bloody awesome. I've never heard people like actually say that term in real life in person. Bloody. It's bloody awesome. That makes me think you have an English accent, but I don't know if you do. Jeanette, you're from the Bermuda Triangle, right? So I actually have a spear right now that is located in the Bermuda Triangle with Jeanette Morrison here. Apparently she lives in the Bermuda Triangle, which I think is badass because now I have a spear that is in the Bermuda Triangle. So very interesting. It looks like James might be coming back. <laughs> Uh, I'm so sorry, you guys. Marcus asks, what diameter bamboo do you select for your spears? You know, actually, my spears are all shapes and sizes. This new collection I'm working on that has, like, I think, like, 40-something spears in it, maybe more. Um, I actually am making really thin, like, almost pencil size. Like, like, it's, like, almost the diameter of, like, a pencil and, like, this long, like, spears right now. And then as part of the collection and then it ranges all the way up to like big tall ones that are like two inches wide and watchful eyes says i have a tree spirit ceremonial staff that's really freaking cool man hmm well james got lost in another dimension it looks like and you know maybe he'll come back Oh, looks like it's just me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. I mean, I'm really enjoying this discussion. So I hope you guys have all enjoyed this. <laughs> James has just been coming in and out of portals this whole time. But it's okay. Um, I mean, we're at about an hour here. So definitely going to do a part two of this um, a different way another time. Hello, do you guys hear me? Oh my gosh. Okay, sorry, we're having so many technical issues on today's show. I hope you can all hear me right now. Oh my gosh. Do you guys hear me now? Please tell me you hear me. Oh my god. Okay. Testing, testing. It works now. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> They're just having mass coronal injections from the sun right now, and, you know, James is lost in a portal, and it's just madness. But I, and I accidentally kicked the cord out of my mic, so I'm sorry about that. But, you know, I think this was a fun show, and I hope you all enjoyed it. 
Um, you know, I'm definitely, I love talking with James, so we're definitely going to have to do this again soon. But if you want to help me out with my studio, uh, again, I will just want to let you all know that I have a lot of art up on my site, which is www.shamanspears.com. And, you know, if you would like to donate besides that, I am posting my PayPal's Notion link in the chat right now because there's actually a lot of equipment I need to get for my studio so I can really get this show going the way I want to be doing it. I know I've been saying this for a while, but, you know, I definitely am planning on doing some more, what like, edited, well thought out episodes and investigative adventures, things like that. So again, here I'm posting my PayPal donation link in the chat. I'm actually having major issues getting this studio together right now. So it'd really be much appreciated because I have a lot I'm doing with this. And this is kind of like everything I'm doing right now. I'm just putting all my time and energy into this show. And I'm excited to have like, you know, obviously I have all my guests coming on. That's what I've been doing the last few years here. But, um. Or last year. Oh, James is back. Okay, let's bring him back on. <laughs> is he? Oh, he's frozen again. Um, you're back. Or not? <laughs> okay, but anyway, and. You know, like I said, again, I have these amazing Orkanite items up on my site right now. Besides the only two spears I have left, I have a whole collection of amazing spears I am working on, which are really cool. And it's called the Odyssey Collection, and all the staves are silver. So they're kind of like spaceship alien inspired, so they're going to be really fun. But this spear, I charged at all the uh, Save the Children rallies here in Hollywood. And I have these amazing Organite Pyramids I created and Organite Brass Knuckles. And I have several Initiation Key Necklaces and these Organite Dacker Necklaces I made myself. So if you would want to help me out here, would be much appreciated and hopefully I can get some better equipment to really have this show going on a whole nother level. So I'd really appreciate it. Again, I'm going to paste this in the comments again, my PayPal donation link. Uh, Jeanette says, what pendants have Moldavite in them? Uh, the initiation key necklaces, they actually almost all have Moldavite in them. They're all wire wrapped with a uh, coarse crystal on the back and they all have a uh, little tiny i don't know if you can see right here but there's like these little dark green pieces in here are actually moldavite uh little moldavite chips and then i actually crushed fluorite and put them inside all of them so very awesome it's my first kind of batch of organite and i actually started making organite because i'm making my own organite spearheads so my next collection that i'm about to come out with here that i've been working super hard on of shaman spears they all have organite spearheads and if you want to check out all my merchandise you can go to www.shamanspears.com it's right here at the bottom of the screen um i believe some of these brass knuckles a couple of the brass knuckles and a couple of the dagger necklaces do have organite in them or i mean i'm sorry moldavite in them as well and no, I am not going to auction off Baby Yoda. He's my friend and he's staying with me. <laughs> so sorry about that, you guys. I kind of, you know, my Baby Yoda, I put a hat on him. So I usually got this hat at Area 51. <laughs> or no, I'm sorry, Area 15 in Las Vegas. So, you know, sorry about the uh, madness with the uh, portals and everything tonight, you guys. But... I still really enjoyed the show. I hope you did too. And uh, next week, I uh, Tuesday next week, I'm going to have my friend Andre Knight on. And we're going to talk about what it means to be a Jedi. So I'm really looking forward to that conversation. So again, that will be at 5 p.m. Like usual, I usually do my show at 5 p.m. 
Tuesdays and Thursdays right here on Apollo's Odyssey. So make sure you tune in Tuesday at 5 p.m. Me and Andre Knight are going to be talking about Jedis. So again, www.shamanspears.com is where you can find my art, help donate for my show. And someone here asked, are brass knuckles legal? You know, actually, Google wouldn't let me do ads for my brass knuckles and my shaman spears. And I'm like, why not? You know, I just, like, want to sell my art, and they're like, nope, it's weapons. And I'm like, well, how do arms dealer people sell their guns? But whatever, you know. This is just in case you really want to align someone's chakras really hard. That's what these are for. And the spears, they're not really spears. I guess maybe I shouldn't call them that, and then maybe Google will let me promote my art more. But... Yeah, you know, I guess they could be used in a way that would be a little more violent. But really, they're art, and I don't recommend using them in that way. You know, I what I do is I carry them with me while I'm hiking in the woods. And, you know, it's mostly just kind of for connecting with my own energy and, you know, meditating. But... If I did run into a mountain lion, I might use it. You know, that's just kind of what the deal is with that. So, Jim Bold asked, who is a Jedi? You know, we're going to find out when I talk with Andre and I on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific. So, make sure you tune in. Actually, make sure you tune in to the show every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. I hope to see you all there. So, until next time on Apollo's Odyssey, over and out.